Live from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering DataWorks Summit 2018. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Welcome back to day two of theCUBE's live coverage of DataWorks here in San Jose, California. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, James Kobielis. James, it's great to be here with you, host in the hosting day seats two, again. Day two, yes. Exactly. So here we are, um, this conference, 2,100 attendees from 32 countries, 23 industries. It, it's, a, it's a relatively big show. They do, they do three of them during the year. Um, one of the things that it's I really- It's a well-established show too. I think this is like the 11th year since Yahoo started up the first Hadoop Summit in 2008. Right, so it's right. an established uh, event. Yeah, exactly, go. exactly. So, but I really want to talk about Hortonworks, the company. This yeah. is something that you had brought up in, a, in an analyst report before the show started. And that was talking about Hortonworks Cash flow positivity for the first time. Which is good. Which is good, which is a, which is a positive sign. And yet, what are the prospects for this company's financial health? We, we're still not seeing really clear signs of robust financial growth. I think the signs are good for the simple reason they're making significant investments now to prepare for the future that's almost inevitable. And the future that's almost inevitable, and when I say the future, the, the 2020s, the decade that's coming, most of their customers will shift more of their workloads, maybe not entirely yet, to public cloud environments uh, for everything they're doing, AI, machine learning, deep learning. And clearly the beneficiaries of that trend will be the public cloud providers, all of whom are Hortonworks partners and established partners. AWS, Microsoft with Azure, Google with you know, Google Cloud Platform, IBM with IBM Cloud. Hortonworks, and this is, you know, their partnerships with these, these cloud providers go back several years, so it's not a new initiative for them. They've seen the writing on the wall practically from the start of, Hortonworks was founding in 2011, and they know need to go deeper towards making their solution portfolio um, capable of being deployable on-prem, in cloud, public clouds, and in various and sundry funky combinations called hybrid multi-clouds. Okay. So they've been making those investments in those partnerships and in, in public cloud enabling the, the Hortonworks data platform. Here at this show, DataWorks 2018 here in San Jose, they've released the latest major version, H, H, HDP 3.0 of their core platform um, with a lot of significant enhancements related to things that their customers are increasingly doing. Well, I want to ask you about those But also, they have partnership announcements, the deep ones of, of integration and, and you know, lift and shift of the Hortonworks portfolio of HDP with Hortonworks data flow and data plane services. So, it could, so that those solutions can operate transparently on those public cloud environments as the customers, and as and when the customers choose to shift their workloads. Because Hortonworks really, like Scott now yesterday, I mean he just laid it on the line, they know that the more of the public cloud workloads will predominate now in this space. They're just making these speculative investments that they absolutely have to now to prepare the way. So I think this cost that they're incurring now to prepare their entire portfolio for that inevitable future is the right thing to do, and that's probably why they still have not attained you know, massive rock and roll and positive <laughs> cash flow yet, but I think they're preparing the way for them to do so in the coming decade. So the the, their financial future is looking brighter and they're doing yeah. the right things. Yes. So, so now let's talk tech, um, and this is really where you, where you want to <laughs> be, Jim, I know you. Oh, I get sleep now and I don't think about <laughs> tech constantly. Yeah. So, so we, as, you, as you've said, they're, they're really doing a lot of emphasis now on their public cloud uh, partnerships. Yes. But they've also launched several new products and, and upgrades to existing products. What are you seeing that excites you and that you think really will be potential game changers. Yeah, well this is geeky, but this is important because it's at the very heart of Hortonworks Data Platform 3.0, containerization of more of, it. when you're a data scientist and you're building a machine learning model um, using data that's maintained uh, and, and persisted and processed within Hortonworks Data Platform or any other big data platform, you want the ability increasingly if you're developing machine learning, deep learning, AI in general, to take that application you might build like using TensorFlow models um, that you build on HD, HDP, 
be able to containerize it in Docker and you know, orchestrate it all through Kubernetes and all that wonderful stuff and deploy it out, those, those AI, out to increasingly edge computing, mo mobile computing, embedded computing environments where you know, the real venture capital mania is happening, mm -hmm. things like autonomous vehicles and you know, drones and you, you name it. So um, the fact is that um, Hortonworks has made that, uh, in many ways, the premier new feature of HDP 3.0, announced here this week at the show. Um, that very much harmonizes with what their partners, where their partners are going with containerization of AI. IBM, one of their premier partners, very recently, like last month, I think it was, um, announced the latest version of IBM, what do they call it? IBM Cloud Private. Um, which has embedded as a core feature containerization within that environment, which is a prem-based environment of AI and so forth. The fact that Hortonworks continues to maintain close alignment with the capabilities that its public cloud partners are building to their respective portfolios is important, but also Hortonworks with its, they call it a you know, single pane of glass, the data plane services for metadata and monitoring and governance and compliance across this sprawling hybrid multi-cloud, these scenarios. The fact that they're continuing to make, in fact really focusing on deep investments in that portfolio, so that when an IBM introduces, or AWS or whoever, introduces some new feature in their respective platforms, Hortonworks has the ability to, as it were, abstract above and beyond all of that so that the customer, the developer, um, and the data administrator, all they need to do if they're a Hortonworks customer is stay within the data plane services environment to be able to deploy with harmonized metadata and harmonized policies and harmonized schemas and so forth and so on and, uh, and query optimization across these sprawling environments. Um, so Hortonworks, uh, I think, knows where the bre their bread is buttered and it needs to stay on the DPS, data plane services side, which is why a couple months ago in Berlin, Hortonworks made it, uh, I think, the most significant announcement of the year for them, and really for the industry, was that they announced the Data Steward Studio. In Berlin, tactically, clearly, it was who addressed the GDPR mandate that was coming up, but really, data stewardship as an end-to-end -end workflow for lots of you know, core enterprise applications absolutely essential. Data Steward Studio is a data plane service that can operate across multi-cloud environments. Hortonworks is going to keep on, you know, they, they, they didn't have any DPS, data plane services announcements here in San Jose this week, but um, you can best believe that next year at this time at this show, and in the interim they'll probably have a number of significant announcements to, to deepen that portfolio. Once again, it's to grease the wheels towards a more purely public cloud future in which there will be Hortonworks DNA inside most of their customers' environments going forward. I want to ask you about themes of this year's conference. So yeah. the, 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 the thing is, is that you were in Berlin at the last big Hortonworks yep. DataWorks Summit. Yeah, uh, and, Libre, and, yes. and really GDPR dominated mm -hmm. the conversations yes. because the, 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 the new rules and regulations hadn't yet taken effect and companies <clears throat> were sort of bracing mm -hmm. for what life was going to be like under GDPR. Now, now, now the rules are here. Um, they're, they're here to stay and companies are really grappling with it, trying to understand the changes and, and how they can exist in this new regime. What would you say are the biggest themes, and we're still talking about GDPR, of yeah. course, but what would you say are the bigger themes that are, that are this, this week's conference? Is it, is it scalability? Is it, I mean, what would you say we're going? What, what, do you, what do you think is dominating the conversations here? Well, scalability is not the big theme this week, though there are significant scalability announcements this week in the context of HDP 3.0, the ability to persist in a scale-out fashion across multi billions of files. <coughs> storage, storage efficiency is, is an important piece of the overall announcement with support for erasure coding, blah, blah, blah. That's not, you know, that's a, it's already Hortonworks, like every, all of their, you know, their cloud providers and other big data providers, provide very scalable uh, uh, environments for storage, workload management. That, um, that was not the hugest buzzy theme in terms of the announcements this week. Um, uh, the, the buzz, of course, is, uh, is HDP 3.0. Containerization, that's important, but you know, we just came out of the day two keynote. 
AI is not a huge focus yet for a lot of the important customers who are here, the developers. Um, they're, they, you know, most of their customers are you know, not yet that far along in their deep learning journeys or whatever, but they're, they're definitely going there. You know, and there was, there's plenty of really cool keynote discussions, including the, um, the guy with the autonomous vehicles, so whatever that, the thing we just came out of. That was not um, the predominant theme this week here. Um, in terms of the uh, HDP uh, 3.0, um, I, I think w w what it comes down to is that um, with HDP 3.0, um, Hive, though you tend to take it for tend to take it for granted, it's been in Hadoop from the very start practically. Hive is now a full enterprise database, and that's the core, one of the cores, of um, of uh, HDP 3.0. Hive itself, Hive 3.0 now is its version. Um, is ACID compliant, and that may be totally geeky to the most of the world, but that enables it to support transactional applications. So more big data in every environment is supporting more traditional enterprise application, transactional applications that require like two-phase commit and all that goodness. The fact is, you know, Hortonworks, from what I can see, is the first of the big data vendors to incorporate those enhancements to Hive 3.0 because they're so completely tuned into the the hive you know, environment in terms of a, of a committer. I think in many ways that is the predominant theme um, in terms of the, the new stuff that will actually resonate with the developers, their customers here at the show. And with the you know, enterprises in general, they can put more of their traditional enterprise application workloads on big data environments, and specifically Hortonworks hopes it's HDP 3.0. So. Well, I'm excited to learn more here at the on the Cube with you today. We're gonna, we've got a lot of great interviews lined up and a lot of uh, yes. interesting interesting content. We've got a great crew too, so this is this is a this is a fun show to do. Sure is. We will have more from day two of the 